know, we get desperate for many things, don't we? At least we think we do. How many of you like desserts? Come on now. I couldn't tell. I'm, I'm, I'm looking out here, and, I, and I'm, I'm seeing very few people. Everybody loves desserts. And sometimes you uh, get desperate for a certain dessert, don't you? Yes. I know every once in a while I get a little desperate for some banana pudding, I'm just saying. Then I'm willing to go somewhere else and try someone else's banana pudding. But it's not like home. I have not found one that can ever compare to my home. Now, I'm not saying there's not good banana pudding out there. I'm not saying that at all. Maybe I haven't tried yours yet. Maybe you need to bring me. <laughs> <laughs> but I know that for times I'll go to certain uh, restaurants and I will say, hey, you know, I, I, I love getting my dessert first. How many of y'all like doing that? Mm -hmm. Oh, I do. Somebody says, why do you get dessert first? I said, that way I don't waste it. You know what I mean? I, I go ahead and get my dessert, and you know, whatever, I, I'll just fill up on something else. But sometimes I go in and I look in the restaurants there, and I'm looking through the desserts first. You, if you ever go eat with me, you'll notice that. You'll say, man, why is he into desserts? I like desserts. And, uh, and as I look at the desserts, I look at different things there, and if, if one catches my eye, especially if it says it has banana pudding on there, I'll be like, hmm, maybe we need to try this. So I, I go ahead and I order it, and then they look at me like I'm crazy. They go, you want it now? Yes, I, I'm not ordering it for later. I'm ordering it for now. <laughs> and so they bring it out, and I'll try it, and uh, it's like, hmm. That just did not get it. Have you ever asked God for something other and it just didn't come out the way you thought it should? I know many times in our life that's what we do. We, we try other things out in this world before we actually come to the original source. We seek after the things of God versus God himself. We seek after pleasures that will help us along the way. And we'll, we, we look for that quick experience so that way we can move on with our life because we're busy people. Come on now. I know I, I look out here and I see everybody that has got so many things going on in their lives. they got so many obstacles in their way. Even in our youth today, I look at their lives and how busy they are. You know, there's... There's, there's a ball after ball after ball after ball. I mean, my goodness gracious, there's a lot there. And then you top it off with school. And then if there's any other uh, curricular activity they want to do, you add that on top of it. It's just so busy. And so many times we forget who the real source is. We forget about who God really is and what we are looking for. Several weeks ago, God gave us a word on uh, you know, seeking Him. It says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Then all these things will be added unto you, right? We're often looking for the things of God versus God Himself, but have we really sought God enough to cause Him to stand still? Have you ever heard of anybody seeking God so much that He just stood still? And call them out. We serve a God that loves us enough that He is willing to stand still when we seek Him diligently. He will take time to stand still and commune with you. Amen. You have your Bibles, turn with me over to Mark chapter 10. We'll start with verse 46. When you're there, say amen. amen. When you're looking at the screen, say hallelujah. hallelujah. Yes. Thank God we have that technology that we're using it for his kingdom and his glory. Amen. amen. 
Start at verse 46. And it says, And they came to Jericho, and then as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great multitude of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timotheus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he had heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Well, how many times have we sat there on the highways and into the bad places of our life and cried out, Jesus, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried more a great deal, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. In verse 49, And Jesus stood still, and commanded him to be called, and they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. Now I'm going to stop right there just for a moment. Remember I said before, have you ever heard of anybody that has ever cried out unto the Lord and he stood still just to commune with him? I'm here to tell you this morning that there was a blind man. He had been blind from birth. He had no sight at all. He, didn't, he never saw Jesus. But yet, somewhere along the way, he heard of Jesus. Somewhere, somehow, something got a hold in his mindset that said that there is a, a, a fellow out there by the name of Jesus that can do great things, that, that can heal people, that can move people, and that, that can deliver them from certain things. How many times in our life do we get caught up in something along the way that that maybe it was our fault that we got it in the first place. 99% of the time, it's our fault that we're in the mess we're in. Come on now. We create the mountains. We create the potholes. We create the, the slums of our life. We create the things that ha have it in our lives most of the time. We do that. But yet, we sit there and we cry out, God. Have mercy on me. And then all of a sudden we don't hear that quick response. And then the next thing you know we're giving up. We're saying to God, I guess I made this self myself. I made this mess all up. So I must endure it myself. This is the cross that I must bear. Oh Lord, how many times have we heard that? How many times have we heard that crawl, that, that saying in our life that come into us and says, well, you know what? This is as good as it's ever going to get. I might as well just learn to deal with it. Hello. How many times have we sat there and we looked at it and we said, well, I guess this is the punishment that I deserve. This is the thing that I must walk through. I'm, this is the stuff I must deal with my whole life. How many times has the enemy rained out into our spirit and says, you know what, you're never going to be good enough. You're never going to have that. You're not going to be like they're going to be. You're not going to be like this one over here. You, you might as well just submit to where you are and deal with what you got to deal with. I'm here to tell you that the enemy is a liar above all liars. You don't have to sit in that pothole anymore. You don't have to deal with that dilemma anymore. Why? Because our God loves us enough that he's willing to take time to stand still and hear what you have to say. Come on now. There's a blind man sitting along the road and he, he couldn't see Jesus coming, but yet he took time and he heard his name being whispered out through the crowd. He didn't know where Jesus was. He had no idea if he was five miles away or if he was ten feet away. He had no idea. But all he had was the voice was with his side that says, Hey, I got to get his attention. If I can get him over here. If I can get him to acknowledge me, my life will be changed forever. Hmm. You see, God doesn't do everything by accident. There's a purpose. There's a destiny that we're at. And we can alter that destiny very quick. 
Y'all remember Zacchaeus? A wee little man was he? Y'all remember that song, don't you? Yeah. But you remember how the encounter he had with Jesus that day. You see, Jesus knew that Zacchaeus was going to be in that tree. You can't tell me any different. But as Jesus got closer to it, Zacchaeus started calling out to Jesus. You see, God don't want us stuck where we are, but he wants us to move beyond our boundaries. What are we seeking after? What are we really seeking after? Is when we seek after the things of God, or are we searching out and looking for God Himself? You see, here's a, that blind man. Let's go back to Bartimaeus right here. The word says that he cried out, Jesus, thou son of David. And the crowd told him, said, hey, you just need to chill out. You need to calm down over here because, you know, you're, you're disrupting something. Let me tell you, we need to be so disruptive that the world can't stand us. We need to be so disruptive that all of hell begins to shake because they know that we have the attention of the Almighty God. And He has stood still long enough to recognize who you are. Jesus could have very well have walked through that crowd and says, whoever that is over there that is calling my name, be healed right now. Just open your eyes and you will see again. He could have done that. But yet, Jesus took time to stand still. I don't think we understand the power that is available to us. We get so caught up in, in society and what they are looking at and what they're doing. We look for the quick answers above all things. How many, what, I'm going to just throw this out. How many of y'all have used a microwave this week? Come on now. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. And most of it was over a meal or something, though, wasn't it? Quick snack, mm -hmm. corn dogs, maybe hot dogs, maybe heating up some stew or soup, maybe making some tea, I know. <laughs> you know? Yeah. We all used that microwave, and, and when we pushed that button, we stood there and we knew without a shout out, if we push 10 seconds on there, the microwave is only going to go for how long? Nine seconds. <laughs> yeah. Some of them were impatient. They were like, nine. I want to catch it before it dings. How many of y'all like that ding? You know? You try to get it out before it goes ding. Yeah, I got you. I got this. But when you push that timer on the microwave, or you turn the dial on the microwave, whatever microwave you have, you know that whenever you set that timer, there's a certain amount of time that's going to happen, and it shouldn't go any further. Have you ever set that timer and it kept going? Huh? Yeah. I bet you would freak out if that timer kept going, wouldn't you? If it just got to 10 seconds and it started over again? Could you imagine somebody out there right now push that microwave? I bet people who watch it online right now are going, I gotta check my microwave. <laughs> I gotta make sure it's in tune. Could you just imagine somebody who had OCD whatever, and touched that microwave and then it kept going over and over again? Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> wow. Imagine some of us without OCD doing it and you're going, hey, there's something wrong with that microwave. First thing I would do, I would say, hey, honey, what's wrong with the microwave? Like, she knows what's going on with the microwave. Come on now, how many of us do that too? Something goes wrong, and we go, we call someone else up, whether it's our spouse or our friend, we go, hey, what's going on with that? I don't know. I'm not the fixer. 
Somebody asked me the other day, he says, hey, uh, my tire on my car makes this rumbling noise here. Uh, do you know what it is? I said, yeah, it's probably you. You're probably hitting something other way. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Are you driving off the road? I don't know. I, I'm not the tire. I'm not, I'm not with you. I have no idea. But people will call and ask you these things, won't they? I kind of find it hilarious that whenever you're standing there to somebody and they go, hey, did you see that? What? Yeah. Hey, what's this going on? I don't know. That's going on. You see, we're always looking for someone else to give us the answers. We're, even in our spiritual walk, we're looking for someone else to give us our answers. Whether it's your pastor, whether it's your Sunday school teacher, whether it's just your mom, your dad, your friend. A lot of times we're looking for someone else to give us an answer versus our God. Because we don't want to wait. We don't like that scripture, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. We want the strength now. We want, it. We want that boldness now. Well, if you want to be bold, stand strong. Wait for God. He has the perfect answer. He has the perfect way, the perfect solution. But it's not going to happen if we're not seeking Him. We can cry, oh God, all day long. All day long we can cry, oh God. But if we're not earnestly seeking Him, all we're doing is calling His name, not seeking His face. That blind man that day was seeking the face of God. Even though he could not see, he was seeking the face of God. And the more he sought him, the more people tried to come against him to make him be quiet. You remember the, the young lady who had the issue of blood? For 12 years, she suffered with this dilemma. She went to every doctor she knew to go to. She went to every physician that was there. She even went to the ones who wasn't even physicians themselves. Went to someone else on these help, self-help programs, I bet you. I bet you she was looking for an answer and a cure from anywhere and anybody she could find. I bet she was. You can't tell me she wasn't. When you're in that dire need and the dilemma is so great, you look for everything around you to help you. When you go into that hospital and that doctor walks in there and that nurse walks in there and then all of a sudden they're telling you some of these things are kind of elevated and all this other stuff's going on, what do you do? You start asking, hey, I need to get a second opinion. Then your mind starts going over here to this other place. And, well, you know what? i seen on TV, hello, that may cure all these ailments over here. So I need to get my insurance to go over here and get these people on board with me over here. And I will be made whole. Hello. Don't tell me we don't. I do. I had the doctors give me some news here, here a while back, and I go, you know, first thing I thought of, well, you know, that center thing is over here. I can go where? I know. And then I go, no, why am I thinking that way? Why, why is my mind even drifting there? Because the enemy knows when I get the Almighty God to stand still and look at me and acknowledge who I am and acknowledge what's going on in my life, I will be made whole. My dilemma will not exist anymore. So the enemy wants to make you spread it out. To live that life of doubt and fear. Who are we seeking after? We seek after man's approval more than we do God's approval every day. Come on now. I want to be pleasing unto the heavenly. I seek Him, and 
I'm here to tell you today, unless we start seeking Him diligently and causing all of heaven and earth to stand still when He does and Him to acknowledge who we are, we will always be looking for other things in other areas. But that young woman that day, she was determined. She knew. Mm, hallelujah. She knew that if she could just touch the hem of his garment. She didn't have to touch him. She didn't even have to be seen by him. Hello. All she had to do was seek just the hem of his garment. I can just picture that young woman crawling through that crowd because you see when she had such a dilemma in her life that if she was caught outside in those days she could be stoned to death for being outside but you know what she didn't care she says i don't care just like those lepers that other week that were sitting on the other side of the roadside and looked over and says look if we don't do anything we're going to die as well why not just take the chance let's just go forth why don't we just press in and get to where we need to get to just like that young woman she pressed through that crowd she crawled up there to the hem of his garment and when she reached out and she touched it he knew somebody had done touched it he knew something went out of him. He knew that something took place. And he stopped and he stood still and he looked around and he says, who touched me? He knew who touched her, but he wanted her to acknowledge that by her faith she was made whole. When Barnabas was crying out, he knew who was calling for him. He went out and shut him out. He knew, but he wanted the crowd to acknowledge who was seeking him. Who was seeking him that day? Who was seeking him this day? Who was crying out the lives and say, God, have mercy on me. God, I have a need. God, I'm here waiting for you. God, and fill me. God, endow with me, oh God. Your greatness, your power, your mercy, and your grace. I must have it. I got to have it. God. Here I am. Here I am. Causing him to stand still and say, Come. Come. All ye that are heavy laden, all ye with burden. I know the trials and the tribulations you're in right now. Oh, but I see you. I have acknowledged you. In verse 50, he says, and, he, and as he told him to rise, and, and he called him out. And he said, casting away his garments, he rose and came to Jesus. You see, I, you thought we were just done right there, but God just finding him. See, there's something that we have to continuously do. There is something that we must do in order to stay in the presence of God. When we have that divine encounter, we can't live the same way we live. We can't act the same way we act. We can't talk the same way we talk. We can't be the same person we used to be. There must be that total transformation 
There must be that total endowment of Christ living in our lives that calls us and says, look, I want to lay everything down. You see, that blind man, whenever he was crawling through them streets, you ain't no telling what he was getting into. His garments were probably filthy as all get out. He probably had some wrenching going on about him. He probably had a little stank going on. But when God called him out, the word says that he took off his garments and he laid it down. And all of a sudden that he rose and he met Jesus. Here I am. Totally exposed to you, God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What will thou that I should do for thee? The blind said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith had made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus the way. You can't tell me that our God will not stand still for you can't tell me that whenever I call out Him and I'm diligently seeking Him, that I and you have the same opportunity as Barnabas. What are we seeking, though? Who are we seeking? And why are we seeking it? You know, I, I'm... I've never been blind, and thank God I have. I remember one time I got a piece of metal in my eye, and I had to wear this patch. And boy, that was annoying. Especially trying to drive. Yeah. And they told me not to, but guess what? I did it anyway. Yeah. When do I listen to doctors? I mean, really. <laughs> But I remember just now thinking about this. We look at our dilemmas like they're just so overwhelming, so burdensome, that nothing and no one can understand, that nothing and no one can even help sometimes. But here's a blind man that had been blind from birth crawling through the streets on his hands and knees, begging, begging for food, drink. I don't know if he had a place to stay or not. How did he get back and forth? How many, how many people made fun of him? How many of y'all ever played pin the tail on the donkey wheel? Yeah. And how many of you were that friend that pointed them in the wrong direction? <laughs> yeah. They were trying to poke the tree versus the, you know, yeah. That or you have them walk and then they trip over something and fall. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got y'all now. Y'all are not blind and folded me at all, I'll tell you right now. I see this crowd. No. But you just think about how many of his so-called friends or people around him pointed him in the wrong direction many times. Just for kicks and giggles. But yet, he found the direction of our Lord and Savior. He heard his voice. He heard the sound that resonated in his soul and says, This is the Jesus I must see. How many of y'all remember this old song, What a Day That Will Be? Oh, yeah. When my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face. 